All right, I hmm, I guess I should do the proper intro, huh? Welcome to another episode of Rocky Vlogs. I've had a lot of people ask about electronics and how I set them up and what switches I use, and the answer to that question is I don't, but uh, I'm going to Las Vegas tomorrow morning, and uh, I'm going to be at Tripoli Vegas Spring Fest for the weekend. I have a K1100, I have a 3-inch rocket with a 54 millimeter mount, and uh, they have Collins to 15,000. This will do... Uh, what do you think? 10, probably? Yeah, probably. Something like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you guys how I set this up real quick. Um, the electronics are actually in the 4-inch Punisher because I made the 4-inch Punishers uh, all thread the same distance so I could just switch them. All right, so this is the electronics bay for my 4-inch Punisher. Um, we like to use wing nuts. We've never really had an issue with it. Works for us. You just got to have, you know adequate finger strength it won't be a concern <laughs> yeah i forgot that's not a step nose cone tip is it so i can get all out of whack is. oh is it is it just loose yeah it was uh, oh, oh well it's, it's good now then perfect so uh here let me pull this apart and i'll show you guys what's going on i use this aluminum tape on the l1040 flight and it sealed it up really good but it's also kind of messy so I don't know if I'm going to stick with that or not. Might go back to the old masking tape. And that's it. That is it. Right there. All right. Um, electrical tape is mock certified. Is it? Yeah. I went. <laughs> uh, this isn't the same sled that was on my level three flight. But it's set up the same way. I just taped them in. And this. I don't know if the L1040 went mock in the four inch. Mm, probably not quite. But it did go fine on my level 3 flight. So, uh, yeah, I just have two 9 volts. Uh, I have a stepped piece of wood. There you go. That the batteries sit against. And then the uh, harnesses for the batteries are electrical taped to the batteries. And then the batteries are taped to the uh, sled. And that's, that's it. It works. We used to do double-sided tape under the batteries. But that's almost more of a nuisance. Because then you, when you have to change batteries, and we change them pretty much every flight, unless we're flying the same rocket twice in one weekend, which that'll never happen with us. No. So, uh, yeah. So don't tape them in. And what rocket? Baldwin's rock has actual trays in it, right? Yep. Those are kind of nice. Because then you just untape it and slam a new one in. It's not quite as uh, barbaric as this. Are we going? Long enough. Ah. 9.3 volts. Nice. I was going to guess 9.2. We have these have been in here since uh when's when's Airfest? September. Mhm. Mm and that's after I flew it. Not bad. <laughs> Honestly, um, I wouldn't be afraid to fly on these batteries again. There's two altimeters for both batteries to have to have completely lost their juice. I guess it's more likely if you use the same two batteries, but it's just smart to replace them after it's been sitting for a long time. Although, they would probably work fine. Should we test it? Sure. Yeah, there's still some zest in there. <laughs> Lime once and then put them in your uh, smoke detectors. Yeah, exactly. See how long it takes them to start beeping. Somebody report that for us and let us know if it's a good idea to fly them more than once after they've been sitting. All four charges fired, unlike <coughs> Taylor's. Taylor, if you're watching this, I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm just better at rocking. <laughs> after I got my level three, he's like, fine, I guess you can fly rockets. And after we flew these, somebody's main charges didn't fire. Somebody flew their four inch drogue list for some reason. <laughs> it's about that fully assembled and painted five inch over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. else have one of those? It's pretty crazy how I built that after I got it. <laughs> I should be an ISIS. It's, I feel like I'm going to need more than just you and me to make that dumb iris fly out there. <laughs> That is going to be stupid. 
Now's a good time for me to remind you of the merch that's available at rocketvlogs.com. We got APCP shirts are the kind of more popular choice because it's like the ACDC logo. I did the font and everything, but it says APCP. I kind of want to get one of the hoodies. Yeah, I need to do something about that next time this flies. <laughs> it's a little loose. Um, but yeah, there's a few other designs as well, but if you want to help me out, obviously, as uh, one guy pointed out, um, the motors are definitely not free, <laughs> but, uh, especially the big ones. Yeah. But, uh, what is especially not free is, uh, my hotel and all the traveling on the miles I put on my car. So if you like the videos and you don't feel like helping out, that's fine. Just hit the like button. I appreciate you watching, but if you do feel like helping out, rocketvlogs.com, we got a bunch of t-shirts and hoodies and stickers and stuff available. I'd really appreciate it. Now let's just about how little coupler goes into the nose cone there. That is that is all you get. Why did, oh, I know why that's gone. Because I had a quick link there, but I took it out because we were trying to fit my 2550 oh, in there. No. Make a research load or uh, find an old caused in or AMW motor. Nice. That's, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect ratio. Yeah, that's got the good ratio for diameter and the length of the rocket, but it it w wouldn't quite fit. Imagine an L2300 in this. You remember that old KVA load? Yeah. These ones I know I tightened the crap out of. I actually might have put Loctite on those ones, which is a smart thing to do. Okay, new Duracell Pro batteries. Um, <laughs> I never touch the settings. I don't know what they're at. I think it's 1500 main, 1200 backup, or 900 backup. So yeah, I don't even know, something like that. <laughs> And one's got a two second apogee delay, but I just always, that'll work for anything. I could go a lot lower main on this small of a rocket, but. And we're back. All right. So we gotta leave the power wire up on those, but I'll tuck the ground wire in between the. Okay, a lot of motors come with these little, uh, containers that have a readout on the side black powder one and a half grams it goes up to two grams i used a scale to test those one time they're actually very accurate so that's what i'm gonna use and uh i'm gonna do one and a half and two for the drogue and then one and a half and one and a half for the nose because it's such a small area that even one and a half seems a bit excessive but maybe i'll do one and one and a half I don't know yet. We'll we'll get there when we get there. All right, here's the procedure for how I make ejection charges. We got two grams of black powder in there. What we do, we cut the tip off a rubber glove finger. Uh huh. Open her up. Pop this guy open. Pour all the black powder in. Take your E match. Make sure you're all the way to the bottom of the glove. And then we wrap that up. So you have a little pouch like that. And then seal the edge. Make sure your edge is sealed really tightly around right there. Because if you have any leakage, that's where it's going to come from. And then... I like to wrap the tape down so that it's pushing all the black powder into the end. And then I'm going to tape it up and show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. All right, there you go. That's my finished product. That's a two gram charge. So that's going to the RRC2 Plus for the uh, one second delay Apogee charge. Um, I wrap them up pretty dang tight. So they're like little firecrackers basically. So now I'm going to repeat that process three more times. And then I'll show you guys what it all looks like when it goes in the rocket. Alright, I have them all laid out. Which one goes with what altimeter? Pop, 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 pop. Alright. So, um, I like... I need to get e-matches with... Or sorry, ejection lighters with longer leads. 
but uh, <clears throat> I never leave these this long. I always cut them so that it's just long enough to get inside that terminal block. That way you don't ever short them like that. Here we go, that's more my speed. All right, so we got these run through our electronics bay lid. We're gonna slide this into the coupler. Electronics base lid in. This is why I need longer leads because we have to stretch them just a little bit to get them to the altimeters. But uh, once they're in and the sled slid in, everything's fine. So I'm going to show you guys that when it's situated. And first, we're going to pass our switch wires through the big hole on my coupler here. All right, so you can see we got the wires in the drogue spot on the RC2 Plus. Good old test tug. Not going anywhere. All right, drogue's connected on both of them, so we can slide it in a little bit and take some tension off these. Not like there's a lot of tension, but you know, just because. I ran a new switch wire as well for the Perfect Flight. So orange is Perfect Flight, yellow is the RRC2. No wonder my parachute got burnt on the last flight, huh? All right, we got everything back in there and uh, all sealed up. So now we just need to put the rocket back together and it's ready to go. Sorry guys, it's just getting a little late. So I didn't have time to show you the uh, art of how I got a 40 inch parachute, a six by six Nomex protector, and like 12 feet of shock cord in there. You know, just for reference, there's my hand. I did it last time, the parachute came out fine, but the parachute also got torched a little bit. I'm flying the same parachute. It doesn't have any detrimental holes. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I kind of want to open it back up and see if I can get a little bit of dog barf in just above the ejection charges, just cause. Uh, and then I'm gonna fly this 18 inch nylon as a drogue, cause this thing's actually pretty heavy um, with that K motor and it'll probably weigh just under 10 pounds. As per the wild man's instructions, we got the drogue nice and close to the electronics bay. Otherwise you will do uh, that. Nose cone will smash into your fin and crack the fiberglass. Shout out Taylor for loading this K1100 at Airfest in our hotel when I was too lazy to do it. One of the most satisfying parts of high power rocketry. Oh, hold on. There we go. Ooh. I thought we had some vacuum resistance there, but we're good. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a chunker. Good lord. All right, I gotta get an igniter out for it, altimeter, everything, it's got charges, we got parachutes, dog barf, no mix. Shock cords are attached. I am really bad about not trusting myself with this, but I know for sure this thing is ready to fly. I'm not taking it apart again. I'm gonna go put it on the pad, put an igniter in it, as long as the altimeters are beeping properly, and we're gonna, we're gonna fly it. I got a new battery for the tracker. Oh, I do have to open it back up so I can put the tracker in there. That's fine. On head-end rockets, I put the tracker in this side just because, especially this thing, there's, is, there's no more room in there. That is 100% at capacity. So we're going to put it on this side. Um, new battery for the tracker. Get an igniter out for the K. One of these should work. Okay, those are long enough, so I'm just going to take them all, even though it's a blue thunder motor and it's... Definitely going to light. Shear pins are in just like that. The three inch Punisher is ready to rock and roll on a K1100.